we are going to talk today about trading size we'll talk today about uh, what the size that I would personally recommend you to trade with what is the size that I think you should be trading and that also of course depends on the how much money you have in your account so we're going to talk about all of these issues and before we do that let me start with Paul now that's a very important uh, first question I have for you is I would like to know your experience in uh, trading how long have you been trading now the question the options that you have here is up to three months three to twelve months or twelve months or more so just let me know share with me um, the period that you've been trading so I will know who and how should I address my answers to okay so it seems like please click the answer if you didn't yet it seems like you've been trading for up to three months there's like a third of you and we've got quarter 25 percent um, still beginners up to 12 months three to 12 months not total beginners and then we have more than 12 months which are more advanced traders are 40 percent so I would like to record these numbers I'll just make a copy of uh, what uh, was just uh, printed here there we go and uh, let's just close it and now I'm going to talk to you about uh, trading quantities because I would like to know what is your trading quantity and before I'll start with the poll I want to make sure that we're talking about um, uh, let, let's define the, the the average stock that we're trading so the average stock that we're trading have a stop loss of approximately 20 to 30 cents it also have at first target about 20 to 30 cents and of course that has to do with the system that you're using so if you're using a different system than mine that's fine that shouldn't be the same numbers that I'm talking about and I have to mention also th the 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 system that I'm going to talk about the trading quantities that I'm going to discuss today has to do with the fact that I'm trading my own system and it's based on a one-to-one -one risk reward ratio approximately 25 to 30 cents average trade so if that's not your system you may benefit from this lesson or not I hope you will I think you will but it has to do with the way I trade the way you see me trade in the trading room now you can take it and you can decide upon um, a different you know to adapt what we're going to learn to the, today to something else that you're doing or something or to, to your system try and adapt it to your system or if you're training approximately the same way I do it doesn't necessarily have to, to do the same system like I'm shorting stocks at the beginning of training or whatever it doesn't have to do with that specifically it can be a different issue but again I'm going to talk today about the way I trade based on my system so again I'm mentioning an average stock here which is usually most of my trades would be in stocks that are priced anywhere between 20 to 40 dollars stop loss would be 25 to 30, 20 to 30 cents and and first target would be approximately the same now of course we can just calculate the numbers uh, later based on different stocks different uh, stock behavior so let's talk about trading quantities and let me ask you what is your quantity based on what I just said for a stock that has a, an average stop loss of 25 cents let's say would you trade up to 100 shares 100 to 200 200 to 300 400 or more that's what I would like to know that's what I would like to know what would be your trade size your average trade of course I can see that some people did not yet hit the button please help us come out with a number not all of you answered yet just click your answer what would be your average size okay in demo too <laughs> joking <laughs> joking funny money no okay good so I think we've got an answer let's just keep it here on the side uh, do you by the way see the answer we've got um, do you see the, the numbers as they pop up on my screen no you don't 
Okay, I think I have to stop the poll. So you'll see it. Do you see it now? You do. Okay, great. So let's see uh, what you just click. So we have 9% up to 100, 100 to 200, we have 25% and we have 22%, um, 200 to 300. And then we've got 41% uh, over, 41% over uh, 400. Let's go back to the numbers that uh, we talked about earlier. Do you see them? Do you see that uh, table two? The poll that we had earlier with how long have you been trading? Do you see that one too? You do? Okay. So let's, uh, let's discuss uh, what we're seeing here. Uh, that's very interesting because as you can see, more than 12 months, we have 40% and approximately 400 and more shares. That's approximately the same number. Now, I want to believe that uh, these are the same people. <laughs> I want to believe. I'm not sure it is, but I want to believe. And let me just tell you this. And again, I'm talking about the average trade, 25 cents stop loss target, uh, 20 to $40. Not a great mover, moving stock. Now, the, uh, of course, it has to do with the personality of the stock you're trading. Like um, you see on the background, it's Walmart. And Walmart's personality, is, it's not a huge mover. So it could definitely be the same thing. So the thing is, what I'm trying to what I'm trying to say here, and I'll, let me just say that clear and out loud. You cannot succeed in trading. You cannot succeed in trading. Yeah, it's blocking it. Okay, sorry. I'll, I'll just doesn't really matter. I mean, I'll, I'll try and show you. I'm trying to show you both, but doesn't really matter. So you cannot succeed in succeed in trading unless you trade. Now listen to this number. Listen to this number unless you trade 400 shares per trade or more. It's impossible. You must be trading 400 shares or more per trade. Now I'll go on and explain that from now on. I mean, the only thing, the main thing we're gonna to talk to the, to, about today is why did I just say that? Why do you need 400 uh, shares or more in order to succeed in trading? Now, if you're just starting to trade up to three months and the third of you guys were in that uh, range of up to three months, that's absolutely okay. I expect you to, to trade less than 400 shares, maybe 100, possibly 200, maybe even less than 100. It doesn't really matter how much, just trade with live money and trade small size because it really doesn't matter at all, okay? It doesn't matter at all. Uh, the thing is, you at the beginning need to learn about uh, trading. You need to um, you need to know a little bit more about uh, what trading is all about, and it doesn't really matter what is your quantity, your exact quantity. But if you're trading more than uh, three months, then you must be trading 400 shares or more. And in this case, I can see that we have 60% of you who are not using 400 shares or more. So we have an issue here. Let me explain. What do I mean about 400 shares and why do I mean about, why do I think that uh, 400 shares is very, very important for you? Now I do have Walmart here, doesn't really matter. I mean, Walmart's, Walmart's um, personality is quite okay. Even though it's a $79 stock, yesterday it was 81, today it's 79. Even though it's $79 stock, its personality is is, is in fact, it doesn't move that much, not a big mover usually. So it could easily get into, into I, I could I could explain what I'm trying to say here about uh, Walmart, the issue with, 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 with the quantities regarding Walmart. So let's talk about Walmart. Let's, let's give you, let's give you a, um, let's give you an example based on Walmart, but again, doesn't really matter. Um, I mentioned earlier that it should be 20 to $40. So most of the stocks in 20 to $40, their personality is relatively okay, like 25 cents stop loss and target. So again, I'm, I'm going here to Walmart and let me just try and explain this. Now, let's say you've seen this lovely technical formation here and you decided to go long. So that's uh, 79.50, let's say 
is a sent over this consolidation area. Nice sort of cup and handle formation. It's uptrending. Now, I'm not saying you should have taken this, and personally, I wouldn't take it myself because Walmart is down 1.7% today. And so again, personally, I wouldn't take it myself, but let's ignore the fact that it's down 1.7%. Let's even think that it's up for the day or whatever. I'm just talking about the technical formation here and what happens when you take a trade that looks like that. So we've got a lovely looking trade here at 79.50. You want to go long at 79.50 and you try to figure out where would be your stop loss. So right now, as you can see, your stop loss could have been here. So we're talking about uh, 25 cents, 26, 27. So again, as I mentioned earlier, we've got a nice support here. It's probably a stop loss of, um, well, even 30 cents. So possibly 30 cents stop loss and 30 cents first target. That would be my average trade. Okay, that would be my average trade. So that could be a good example. And again, it doesn't matter if I would have taken Walmart or, does or don't take Walmart. Now, let's say we took and let's say you don't see what comes next. I mean, you don't know what's coming next. And of course, you took Walmart 79.50 and thought you potentially have a great trade here. And then Walmart starts moving higher. So let's now assume you're trading 100 shares. Let's assume you're trading 100 shares. And what happens? Walmart starts moving higher. And then it comes to the point Look at this topping tail here. It comes to the point where it's up approximately 15 cents. And then it starts to move lower. And let's say you're still holding it to it because it didn't get to your first target, which should be 30 cents. So you're still holding it to it, okay? And then it came down, as you can see, there's a bottoming tail here and started here and even came farther down. At some point you were down like uh, four or five cents, something like that, and then happily, I'm very glad to report it came back up, but then it goes sideways, it doesn't really go anywhere. So the question is, what do you do with 100 shares? My opinion is what happens when you have 100 shares, you just wait. You just wait. What would happen in my case? If I would see a stock like that move sire, and I have 100 share, and I have, let's say, 1,000. I don't want to talk about my regular quantity. That sh I mean, sometimes it's up to 4,000 shares. Let me talk about a quantity that I would, you know, that would be interesting for you to hear. Let's talk about 1,000 shares, okay? What would happen in my case if I trade 1,000 shares, and that could definitely be a 1,000 share trade because it's, you know, a little bit later the day. I don't trust it. It's down 1.7%. Just assume I would have taken this. So it moves up. I'm up 15 cents. I'm at that point. I'm up $150. Up $150. Now it comes down. Now I'm down like $40, $50. And then it comes back up. I'm up again $150. Now it starts playing around a little bit. And at one point it came another, I don't know, five cents up and came down and doesn't go anywhere. And all of a sudden I can see that it's moving down. I'm still up, let's say, uh, 15 cents, 14 cents, 13 cents. 12 cents, I'm getting a little bit worried. It doesn't look so great right now. I click the button and I sell, let's say 800 shares or maybe, you know, maybe less, maybe 600 shares, whatever. If I just sold 800 shares at uh, 12 cent uh, profit and I'm still holding 200 shares, so I'm like 90, close to $100 close to $100 profit. So I put, I just put $100, a little bit less in my pocket, paid a little bit commission, let's say just $90. So, and now I have 20, 200 shares. My stop loss still remains here. It comes down to my stop loss and I'm out. I lost some money. I lost uh, some money on the last 200 shares. I made $90 here. Now I lost uh, $60 on my last 200 shares. So I'm still left with $30 in my pocket even though Walmart came down. So that's how my trading, my trade would look like if I'm trading with 1,000 shares. How would your trade look like? At least the ones, the one who clicked uh, 100 shares or let me even talk about 200 shares, but let's start with 100 shares. How would your trade look like? The stock moved up, starts playing around a little bit, then makes you a bit happy because it came to 20 cents. Now it comes down again. You're getting a little bit worried. It's you're only up to 13, 12 cents. Now, would you sell 
80 shares from your 100 shares, would you sell 80 shares and left with 20? No way, right? Nobody would do some such a foolish thing. I mean, what what would like what would like 20 worth if it moves up a dollar? <laughs> really? Or, or another 50 cents, 20 shares, it's another $10. Did, did you even even pay your commission? Or, yeah, well, maybe a little bit. But yeah, maybe you sell it all. That's correct. That's, what, that's one option. That's correct. Maybe you sell it all. Maybe you just don't sell every, anything. And I'll tell you why you don't sell anything. Most of you won't sell anything. Because... It, it, it still is up $12, so what happens if it comes down? So now I'm, I'm up $8, $7. I'm not sure I should even take my partial at $12, even if I could, because I only have 100 shares. Even if I sell the whole 100 shares here, I still paid commission, like uh, probably like $3 or $4 or something like that. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to sell it, okay? So it doesn't worth putting $12, pay $3 commission. It comes down a little bit now. If I'm going to sell it at my entry point, I'm down like three. I'm down like uh, $3 of my commission. And now I'm down like $7. I'll wait a little bit more. So it's down like $10, $15, no big deal. I'll wait a little bit more. Maybe it comes back up. Maybe it doesn't, whatever. Now it came down dramatically. So I, I guess I should have moved out. So I had um, 100 shares. I just lost uh, 10 20 30 maybe $5, whatever. So what I'm trying to say here, and again, try to figure out what happens if you guys trade 100 shares. You, okay, let me say it this way. You will not do the same thing I do. You would hear me in the trading room say something. I just took my partial, but at many, many, many times, you will just wait until it does a little bit more. Even if I took my partial at 30 cents, you would still with 100 shares say, well, I'm not sure I should take my partial with 100 shares, or if I'll take a partial, you'll sell everything. You won't sell 80 shares, right? You won't sell 50 shares. It doesn't worth holding for 50 shares. Even if you have 200 shares, what happens if you have 200 shares? Would you sell 150? No, you wouldn't leave 50 shares. Would you sell 100 shares? Possibly. So you just took $12 profit with 100 shares because you sold a $12 profit. The rest 100 shares comes down and at one point you decided to move out. So you maybe lost 10, 12, $20 on the last 100 shares. You paid commission, so you're still down. So even if you trade 200 shares, I only trust you, so-called trust you to sell maybe at my partial, the way I trade, of course, and again, it doesn't necessarily mean that you should be trading like I do. But if you're trying to copy me, if you're trying to mirror me with 100 shares or with 200 shares, you're done. You're gone. You're not going to make money. You're not going to make money with 100, 200 because your partial may have been 100 and then you lost another few dollars on the second 100. So you end up in a losing trade. I just made $90 when I sold 800 shares here with 1,000 shares. And maybe I lost a little bit on the last 200. I still came up 30, 40, 50 dollars on this trade. For me, it was a profitable trade. For you, you're down 10, 20 dollars. Now, you, you may take another one or two trade. End of the day results, you're down 40, 50 dollars. After a month, you're gone. What I'm trying to say here is that the only way to trade like I do and again, you don't necessarily have to trade like I do. But the only way to trade like I do is to trade with 400 shares. And the reason you need 400 shares is because at the point that I sell, if you want to trade again like I do, not necessarily you want to do that. If you want to trade like I do, at the point where I sell, I get my partial, at the point I decide to move out, either at my target 30, 40 cents, or if it doesn't do anything, like the example I gave you in Walmart, if you want to trade the same way I do, you need to sell at least 300 shares. So let's assume you sold 300 shares at a 12 cent profit. You're up $36, okay? And now the last 100 shares are down, let's say, $16. And the last 100 shares just took $16, you're still up $20. What I'm trying to say here is that if you take 400 shares, based on my strategies, you sell 300 shares, 
and you're only left with 100 and you can hold 100 because if it's going to move another 50 cents up then the 100 worth something they matter so you can make another 50 dollars or more we, we we had plenty of movers today who moved more than a point so you could make with 100 shares a great trade every day almost every day in our trading room so if you trade the same size i do with i'm sorry at, I'm sorry, at least 400 shares and you sell 300 shares the way I do, you can make money. If you start trading 100 or 200 shares at a time, you won't do what I do because you won't take an 80 cent partial. And if you do take a partial with 200 shares, it's going to be 100. It's not reasonable. I wouldn't believe if you say that you take 150 shares partial. By the way, if, again, if you're starting it, if you're in the first one, two, three months, that is fine. You can play with 200 shares and you can take a 150 shares partial because it doesn't really matter at that point. Okay, commission doesn't matter. Nothing matters at that point because you need to learn. Okay, you can even start with 100 shares. I would in fact like you to start with 100 shares. I would like you to start with 100 shares and I would like you to take a partial of 70 shares and left be left with 30 shares and it doesn't matter what your commission just imagine that instead of trading 100 shares you're trading 1000 shares that is fine i like that that is great because you're just starting out but if you're over your one two or three months up to three months not more than that then at that point you must be trading 400 shares or more you can't be trading less than 400 shares now am i Am I making sense here? Do, do you understand what I'm trying to explain here? Now, if you trade 100 shares, are you really doing what I'm doing? If you're trading 200 shares, are you really doing what I'm doing? What, what, what? Does it make sense what I'm trying to say here? Do you, do, do you follow what I'm trying to explain here? I'm trying to... Please share. I mean, I, I like to see what you're writing. I like to know what you're saying. I like to think what I, I, I would like to challenge that. If you have, if you need, if you think you need to challenge my opinion, uh, if you think you need to challenge my opinion, that's fine. I, I will explain to you how it's even in other systems. So I'm hearing a lot of things, a lot of traders saying uh, that it's a little bit it's actually very hard to do what I do in the trading room. I know it's not simple, but if you try to do what I do with less than 400 shares and 60% of you just said earlier that they try to do that with a different way. They try to do it with less than 400 shares. It is impossible. So 60% of you don't stand the chance. The other 40% of you stand the chance and it's still hard for them. It is not easy for the rest of you to make money even mirroring my trade. Okay, it's not easy. But at least they stand a chance with 400 shares. If you start trading with 100 shares, you're gone, you're finished. You don't have a stand, you don't stand a chance. Let's stop a little bit and let me ask, let me answer some of your questions. I know you asked earlier, but let let please repeat them so because so I, I want to see them all cons all right here. So if I missed any of your questions, just please go back, copy them, and just post them again. So if if it makes sense to you, just try and figure out. Um, how to move up with your quantity now let me just um, ask uh, I'll ask you guys who trades you know what let me let me ask let me first see your question then I'll, con I'll continue hmm okay size increase with bigger risk too of course a bigger risk but l let me talk about the risk and next next thing i'm going to talk about risk you do it with 200 and 300 shares but you don't really make money dion okay then the thing is again i would like you dion at the point where you take a partial i would like you to make a decision a clear decision I would like you at the point where you take a partial 
and again, the test to be 400 shares with the 300 shares partial, I would like you to make a decision that once you took your 300 share partial, you're no longer, no longer at risk. That's what I do anyway. That's the way I trade. At the point where you take a 300 share partial, again, based on what I just explained, I want you to come to the point where you decide I am not taking that money out of my pocket anymore. So you could possibly have your stop loss right now for the last 100 shares. I'm not sure it's always wise, but it's good for beginners, by the way. You possibly put your stop loss at the last 100 shares at the entry price. And once you put it at the entry price, you no longer take your profit from, the, from your pocket. Okay. One of the important things about trading traders is once you make a profit, you do not take it from your, you do not risk it again. I have said that plenty of time. Every day I'm trading, every day. You've seen me today up. Here's my account. You've seen me. Too. I'm still holding, by by the way, as you can see here. I'm still holding uh, ACHC here. Let me just see what it's doing. <laughs> it's still going. It's still going. 200 shares. 200 shares left, traders. Let me put it a little bit on the side. 200 shares. Up $1,600 on this trade alone. And it's up more than two points. Okay? That's That's the way I like to see them. That's the way I like to see them. Keep on going, keep on going. And just 200 shares. So look at that. I started with 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 much greater quantity. Can't remember how much. I only made $1,100, but on the last 200 shares, I'm making $460. And look at it goes. I'm gonna finish my day up $3,400 today. So I'm having a very good, a very good day. But again. Just 200 shares left. So imagine you just had 100, it started with 400 shares, uh, took a partial of 300 shares, okay, and just left with 100. With 100 shares, you'll be up like $230 right now and going, and going. So that's that's where I like you to be. I would like you to put the risk behind you. I would like you to take a trade, have a 300 shares partial, put the risk behind you. It doesn't matter if it's just 12 cents, $30 in your pocket. $30 in your pocket is better than nothing. Put the $30 imported. Don't return the money to the market. What you made, don't return. It's one of the important rules about trading. You do not return money to the market. So it doesn't matter if it's your all account uh, profits today or one trade profit. You made some profit on whatever trade that was. Don't return that money to your to, to the market. You can do it with 400 shares because if you do it with 200 shares, and again, do you want to go back to you? If you do it with 200 shares, well, the problem is you just took a partial with 100 and you left with 100. You could easily lose 5 cents on the last 100 plus commissions. You're done for the trade. Okay? Maybe I exaggerated a little bit. Okay? But you could easily, easily with 200 share, finish the trade down for the day. Finish the trade down for the day. I never want you to come to that point. I would like you to have a winner even with a 12 cent partial. Let me ask you guys, and I'll go back to your question. I'm sorry that I'm, you know, going in between uh, everything today, uh, up and down, uh, not answering all your questions and just continuing, but it's very important for me to continue. Let me ask you this. How many of you think that um, on an average breakout, what is an average breakout? <laughs> How to say? On an average breakout, you expect, let's say you expect a 30 cent partial. 30 cent partial. Okay? Again, $40 stock, average breakout. Breakouts looks okay. First, let's say one hour of the trading day. On an average breakout, how far would the stock move? Now, what do you think? What is what do you think the percentage of the stocks that you will take on an average uh, breakout that would move um, 20 cents? How many of them would move 20 cents on an average breakout, percentage-wise? Would it be like 99%, 90%, 80%, 70%, 60%, 40%, 30%? Um, motion said 80%. What's your number, guys? Uh, 50%, okay. I'm not going to tell you what I think. I think you're the average of you guys is probably right. I, th I think these are good numbers, really. Okay, so we've got more chances than, than, than failing. 
I, let, let's just agree about that. Okay, now let me ask you this question. What would be the percentage on an average breakout that a stock will make 12 cents? Write down your number now. Earlier we talked about 20 cents. Now I'm talking about 12 cents. 12 cents. 90%. Reza says 30. 70, 90, 90, 80, 70, 89%. <laughs> How did you come to that number, Theodore? 90%. 80, no, it's okay, it's okay, 70, 99, 90. So let's say we're, 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 we, 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 we believe there's, a, of course, a, large, a better chance for a stock to um, make 12 cents, okay? So what I'm, tr what I'm saying here is the following. If you have like an 80 or 90% chance, let's agree at least 70%, okay? that the stock would make 12 cents and you're trading with 400 shares and you will just decide starting tomorrow that you take a partial of 300 shares and the rest is just at the open price and don't take your partial at 12 if it moves higher take more but if it pulls back down never be left with less than 12 never be left with less than 10 cents okay 10 cents Thir th 300 shares 30 dollars in your pocket you just paid for dinner would that be a reasonable thing to do? I mean, it must be. If you took your partial with 100 shares, 12 cents, the last 100 shares could do, go down 12 cents under the entry and commission and everything, and nobody cares about a profit of $5 or $10. I want you to feel $30 in your pocket. If you have $30 in your pocket, you just make a nice trade, in my opinion, okay? You're just beginning, you're still starting, $30 per trade, that's a nice beginning. So what I'm trying to say here is, please take a substantial partial. Take a substantial partial. 300 shares is substantial partial. It will put enough money in your pocket so that you will declare yourself a winner. That's what I want you to be. I want you to declare this trade as a winner. I want you, even though you left with 100 shares, to you know, just feel okay. Now I'm, I'm okay. I just took my partial. I can't lose. And if you can't lose, then you can't come to the point where you're managing a trade like that, when you still have 200 shares and you're up $500. That's what I would like you to be at. When you're starting out and you hear us in the room, take a trade and up two and a half points, one point. One, when was the last time as a starting trader that you enjoyed, that you enjoyed one point winner with 100 shares? Did you hear us take one point winners several times a week, several times a week, and you never got a one dollar winner? How many of you guys, let me Write down the answer. How many of you guys never enjoyed? Please open up. I mean, I, you don't have to. It's not, you know, not, we're not judging you here. I, I had the same issues when I started out. How many of you guys never had a one dollar winner? Of course, it's hard. You got shaken out. It's hard to hold for never. You never had one. I get that usually a few times a day. I get it usually a few times a day. So the thing is, what I'm trying to say here, the thing is, if you will take your 300 share partial and you put three, $30 in your, par, in, in your pocket, and, and yeah, you never had one, and you'll put 300, you'll put 300 shares in your pocket, just sell them for 300 uh, share, for $30 profit, 10 cents, 10 cents, not much more than that, then please, Hold the last 100 shares to the point where you have two and a half points, not even one. Now, I'm going back many years. I'm going back many years. You know, when I started my first year, I, I, was, um, I was at the trading room, a different trading room, of course, not my trading room. <laughs> and I was listening to the analysts, just like you listen to me in my trading room. And they would have $1 winners every day. And they would have a party every time, like we're ringing the bells and we're doing a lot of things when we have one dollar winner. And I, I know that you guys on the other side, many of you never enjoy that. Question is why? Because you do not manage your quantity correctly. You do not manage your quantity correctly. If you took 200 shares and you just 
got a partial for 100, you can't possibly wait for one dollar winners. If you took, sorry, if you took 100 shares, no way. Unless you're very, very lucky. And you're just not going to hold for that number. If you took 400 shares and you just took a partial of 300, guys, you start having one dollar's winners starting tomorrow. Starting tomorrow, you will have one dollar winners. I didn't have one dollar winner for two years, even after I started in the trading room. For two years, I didn't have one dollar winners. I wasn't mentally capable of having one dollar winners until I understood what has to do with quantity. Guys, I'm telling you again, you need to think about your quantity in a different way. By the way, market is just about to close and I'm still going to hold. Um, actually, I'm going to lower the number to 100 shares. I'm still going to hold 100 shares, just lowered, uh, for tomorrow, which I usually do. Did you he just hear my uh, <laughs> my cell phone rings? The reason my cell phone, my cell phone rings uh, a few minutes before the trading day is over is because if I'm still holding something, I'm coming in at the last few minutes and I'm making a decision whether I'm going to hold something at all. So AVC, AV, ACHC, look at it. Look at how it goes. Look at the growing volume. Look at how it finished at the lows. It just looks absolutely amazing. So there's no reason for me not to hold it for tomorrow. And look at this breakdown area over here. I think there's a very good chance going to continue tomorrow. So with 100 shares, I'm willing to bet on that. With 100 shares. So here's the bell. Trading day is over. And that's it uh, with this one. Let's go back to Walmart because I did not finish my lesson. I did not finish my lesson. And I'll come back to your question. I know you asked me a few and I'm I'm, I'll come back to your question. Now, mm, there were a few things I wanted to discuss to you. Mm, okay. The I'm only I'm only going to ask now this question the 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 traders here in the room who mentioned that they trade up to 300 shares up to 300 shares not the one who, who discussed 400 shares of more, or more you guys who traded up to 300 shares how many trades a day do you take on average one two three four five six seven eight ten how many trades on average do you make please write down the number just write down the number Motion striking 2, 2, 8, 4, 2, 8, 3 to 6, 2 to 3, 2 to 3, 4 to 9, 10, 3 to 5, 2, 1. If the first one is in, I like that. I really like that, Charlie. That 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 is very good discipline. 1 to 4, 4. I like the 2 also, Tim. The average 2 trades, whoever mentioned that motion mentioned that 2. I like that numbers. 2 to 3 Fabio, that's good. Now I do have a problem with 3, 4 and more. I do have a problem with 3, 4 and more. Actually, let, let's not say I have a problem with that. Let's just say that. Let's just say this. I just mentioned that you need to trade 400 shares, right? So the next thing you should ask me is... But, well, that changes my... If you just meant that changes my risk, I mean, money-wise, right? That changes your risk. Now, I may be, throughout this <laughs> presentation, maybe answering some of your questions. So hold on to your answers, to your questions, sorry, I'll answer them later. So, but you, 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 you're thinking now, well, that, that's impossible because I can't trade 300 uh, or 400 shares and with a 30 or 25 cent on average uh, loser, I can't do that. I can't do that. Because, uh, yeah, I'll, 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 I'll get into trouble trying to do that. So let me go back to some to one of the things that I'm, I'm teaching on the Star Trader course. I'm not going to get much into details, but let me just say that. Okay, so we calculated 400 shares. Obviously, your stop loss should be, again, average, 25 cents. Now, of course, if by the way, if we're talking about a stop loss of 50 cents or 60 cents, 
you can definitely trade 200 shares. I was talking about the average trade, just a reminder. I was talking about the average trade. So the average trade, I'm talking about 400 shares. If you're taking a 50 cents stop loss with 200 shares, I, I don't have any problem with that. Also, if you do take that, you can definitely take 200, have a 150 cent, 150 shares partial and be left with just 50 shares. I have absolutely no problem with that. Go ahead, do that. That's, that's okay. But again, I'm coming back to the 400 shares, 25 cents. So you're risking $100. You're risking $100. In order to risk $100, you must have at least $10,000 in your account. That's a different lesson. We'll do it some other time. Or if you do it in the Star Trader course, we talk about that. We do start a Star Trader course at the end of this month. If you didn't sign up yet or join the 3K program, you probably should. So... I'll go to one of the things that I'm teaching in the Star Trader course. You can't lose more than 1%. On some occasions, 2%, but on average, 1 point something percent. In order to be at that range, you must have the ability to lose $10,000. Now, since it could be up to, on average, let's say 1% to 2%, 8,000 would be also okay, 7,000 maybe. We go back to the number that we mentioned earlier today. We talked about it before the class, actually. So again, 8,000, $10,000 in your account. Can't lose more than 1% per trade. That's one of the most important rules. You'll find it in my book. You'll find it in actually probably every trading book that you will hear or uh, read. Uh, so, so approximately, no, not of the buying power, 1% of uh, your account value or how much money you can lose. So if you have $8,000 to lose, you can't lose more than $80, okay? That's approximate number. You can't lose more than that, okay? Very important. So if you're losing, but, but I'm, I'm per trade. Yeah, absolutely. Now I, I can get into this for in, in into this to explain that in the next one hour. I'm not going to do that. We teach that in the Star Trader course. I'm not going to talk about it right now. But just get it as I say and you'll read it in every book. It's not my opinion. It's every every experienced trader's opinion. That would be the range. So let's just say you that you you, you, you trust me now and you think that I'm giving you the right number right now and that for some reason you believe that 1% is okay because I didn't explain that right now. So let's just say it's right and you can't lose more than uh, $100 per trade and that's okay with 400 shares, right? So uh, that's okay with 400 shares. You can't lose more than one trade a day. One trade a day. Now you just mentioned, most of you tra mentioned the one who trades up to 300 shares. You just mentioned that most of you, the majority, some of you said one to two trades, fine. The majority said three or four trades or more. So what I'm trying to say here is that if you take four trades and you take it with 100 shares and your stop loss is $25, you may lose $100 a day, okay? Or $25 a trade. If your maximum loss per day is $100, that's, that's obviously how you calculated it. I would urge you to move to a 400 share trade, one trade a day. I think that with one trade a day, instead of four trades or more, one trade a day with 400 shares, your chance to succeed, plus pay a lot of less commissions to your brokers, which is always important, your chance to succeed with one trade with 400 shares is much greater than trading four trades with 100 share. That's what I'm trying to say here. That's what I'm trying to say here. Okay? That's what I'm trying to say. So, just go down with your number of trades and trade 400 shares. And let me just talk to you about what happens, one more problem, what happens when you're trading, when you're trading in fact uh, 400 shares, uh, sorry, 100 shares. <laughs> let me go a little bit, let, let me go back to Walmart here, okay? Let me go back to Walmart. Take a look again at Walmart. I'm just gonna give you an example. 
and you think when I'm giving you this example right now, think about what you actually doing and let her tell me if I'm right or wrong. Let me tell you if I'm right or wrong. You're in my training room. You follow me, you follow other analysts. You follow some of your own picks, which is great, which is great, okay? I love the fact that some of you are developing your own system. That's what it should be, but that's that's a, a matter for another that's a matter for another lesson. Okay, that's something for another lesson. So let's say we posted this room, this trade in the trading room, and we just discussed let's go and buy Walmart over forty seventy nine forty nine. Let's click the button at seventy nine fifty. Okay, let's just discuss that. And you click that button with one hundred shares. And I click that button with 1,000. Now, let's assume 1,000 shares is a lot of money for me. For me, in order to move me emotionally, I need to bid 4,000 or more than 1,000, maybe 2,000. You know what? 1,000 does move me emotionally, not as I should be moved emotionally. But let's just say I'm taking this with 1,000 shares and you're taking it with 100 shares. Okay, so let's see what happens. Now, let me describe this to you. Listen out. Okay, just listen now. Let her tell me if I'm right or wrong. And I'm just trying to explain what goes on in your mind right now. And you know what? I start with what goes on in my mind. The thing that goes on in my mind when I'm clicking that button and I'm with 1,000 shares and every cent is $10 and that's a lot of money. That's a lot of money. Yes, it is. It starts moving up quickly. It moved up by like uh, 15 cents or so. So I'm in. I'm actually. I just. I just chose 1,000 shares. Let's let's try and do it <laughs> as if it was real. I just chose 1,000 shares. I just click that button. I'm open with 1,000 shares, and I'm glad to say that uh, Walmart is moving slightly up. One, two, three cents. Now believe me. I'm glued to this screen right now because every cent that it's moving up is ten dollars. Up ten dollars, twenty dollars, thirty dollars, forty, fifty, sixty, seventy, eighty, ninety, one hundred, one twenty, thirty, forty, fifty, going down, one thirty, one twenty, one ten, one hundred, eighty dollars, seven oh my god, I'm losing it, seventy dollars. I just I just had $150 in my pocket and I'm watching the buyers and the sellers at every move here. I'm watching the buyers. I'm watching the sellers. I'm watching the number of sellers and again, I'm sorry it's not live right now. Otherwise, I would have shown this to you. I'm watching the quantity of the buyers. I'm watching the quantity of the sellers. I'm watching it. I'm glued to my screen. I'm watching at the same time what the S&P is doing. Is it going up? Is it going down? Please go up because if it go, co comes up, again, one of the main things when you're trading, watch the S&P 500 because institutional, institutional traders are following it. How many buyers do I have? Oh, this buyer just moved up by two cents. Oh my God, this seller just renewed this quantity. It's moving down a little bit. It's moving up a little bit. Okay, it's moving up. It's moving down. What's it going to do? Okay, S&P, S&P, it's moving up, moving down. Okay, I'm watching it. I'm very clearly watching it. What's the time and sale doing? Okay, quantities, big buyer, big buyer, great, big buyer. Oh my God, somebody's selling two large quantities. I'm watching the time and sale. I'm watching the S&P 500. I'm watching the buyers. I'm watching the sellers. I'm watching everything. I'm glued to the screen. I'm concentrating like a fighter pilot right now about to drop bomb somewhere. I am watching this and I'm concentrating on this trade because every cent here is $10. Okay. Okay. Now let's go back to you. <laughs> Excuse me for being a little bit dramatic here. You just bought it for 100 shares. Okay, it's moving up. It's moving up. I'm up $3, $5, $10. Nice, nice. $12, $13, $15. Hmm, okay. It's moving down now. Well, I only have $12, $11, $10, $8, $7. Ah, it's okay, it's okay. No big deal. $15, no big deal. $7. Oh, Scott just posted another trade. That sounds great. He just posted long in uh, whatever, Macy's. Sure, let's go long here. Here's Macy's. 100 shares. Yeah, great. $2, $3, $5 coming down. $2, $3, $5. Oh, 
Now, Danny just posted another trade. Let me take Danny. Danny's trade looks great. I'm actually down like $20 a day. Maybe Danny's trade is going to help me here. I'm taking Danny's. Time and sale? What? 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 Should I watch Tan and say it's only up like $12 here right now? Buyers, sellers, quantities glued to my screen watching the S&P 500. I don't care that. 100 shares here, 100 shares there. What can happen? I lose $500, $5 here. Maybe I'll get $1 winner on the other one. I can make $100, so no problem. So it's down $10. No, no big deal. I didn't took my partial at $12. Just like Mayor said, I... I just lost $10 here. Yeah, well, Macy's could probably give it back. Oh, I just lost $5 in Macy's too. Well, interesting. Now I'm down $15 a day plus commission. And what about the third rate? Well, maybe I'll make it. Maybe I won't take it. Do you get my meaning? Now, is that you? Now, that, did I just describe how you trade? Did I just describe the fact that you don't watch enough the level two, did I just describe the fact that you don't really care if you're up $5 or down $5? Did I just describe the fact that you're not learning anything because you're not watching the buyer sellers like I do? Did I just describe the fact that you never watched the buyer renewing their quantity, sellers renewing their quantity? Did I just describe the fact that you're not paying enough attention to every small detail in the stock that you're trading just because you just traded 100 shares? Is that true or wrong? I'm willing to discuss everything. You say it's wrong, let's discuss that. You say it's true, great. I'm just trying to get into your head. And believe me, I taught tens of thousands of traders. I know what you think about. I know what you're doing. I know the way you think, I know the way you behave, I know why I am having a great day like today, up three and a half thousand dollars, and you're taking a fifty dollar loss. I know how you behave. I read your mind. That's why they call me the market whisperer. <laughs> I just actually called myself that name. Don't believe it. Okay, guys. The thing is, with trading quantities, really, with trading quantities, it's not just the thing with the 300 shares partial, put them on money in your pocket, put your stop loss at the entry, put don't return the money. I've said let, many things I've said here today. It's not just that. It's, it adds to a lot of other mistakes that you're trading. It adds to over trading. Please trade one trade a day with 400 shares. It adds to over trading. You take 100 shares and you'll take the other analyst trade and the other analyst trade and your trade and his trade and that trade and now you're down $40 and the last person in the room who just posted this totally wrong trade, you trust him to be your best trade for the day because maybe that one last trade could bring you back to green territory. Am I reading your minds or what? The thing is traders, trading small quantities is absolutely wrong. Now let me go back and say that sometimes based on your strategy, this could be right. This could be right. <laughs> and I want to tell you about something that happened two hours ago. I was sitting here in front of this computer and a guy chatted with me, came from, from, from Facebook. And I just made this, um, the lesson I'm giving you right now, this mentorship, I just made it in a different language. English is not my mother tongue. So excuse my English. I just made it in a different language and uh, to a different crowd of people and he listened to this um, to this uh, webinar I did and he came to me just like two hours ago and you know what he said? He said, you're wrong. I said, fine, so great, just explain. 
why do you think I'm wrong? He said, because on, based on my strategy, I do this, I do that, I do here, I do that, and I make money. And then I said, and it was a he was a little bit angry with me. He read my book, and he follows me, and then he listened to this webinar, and he said, I don't agree with Mayer. I mean, for the first time, I'm a little bit angry with this guy because he just said, you can't make money in trading unless you trade 400 shares, and I, I don't agree. I trade 200, 300 shares all the time, and I'm doing well. And he was a little bit angry. But I'm glad he found the courage to, you know, to chat with me and to say that he's a little bit angry and he doesn't agree with me. And then he described his, uh, his way of trading. And I said, now please go back to the beginning of the webinar. Please go back to the beginning of the webinar and listen to what I said at the beginning of the webinar. Because at the beginning of the webinar, I said, it is not right for each and every strategy. There are systems... And then I, I listened to, I saw, he described the system, he actually attached some, some charts and so on. And he said, I'm doing that, I'm doing this, I'm doing that, and I'm, I'm regularly making money in the market. And I've read your book and I've seen, and I've been on one of your, and he actually did the Top Trader course. He actually did the Top Trader course with Shlomo too. And he said, it's a great course and I read your book and everything, but I, I can't agree with what you just said. Right. And then he went back and it took him 10 minutes to come back and to say, yeah. You did say that. He was he was <laughs> he was he was happy that he heard me say at the beginning of the webinar. It's not right for every strategy. Now his strategy is not one to one risk reward. His strategy is at least one to two risk reward, which is a little bit harder. I also talk about it in the Star Trader course, and I describe the difference between one to one, and that's another lesson. That's another one hour lesson, and I need to talk about. The, the, I, I do talk about, ab about, the strat about different strategies and how you need to behave. And if you do have a one-to-two or more risk-reward strategy, which is not mine, I'm trading one-to-one -one risk reward strategy, okay? So if you do have a one-to-two risk-reward strategy, and it's not the majority of the traders, that's really a small number because it's harder to trade one-to-two or more, just that you understand. If you have one-to-one -one risk reward strategy, then you have at least 50% chance to succeed. If you start with one-to-two -two strategy, you, at the beginning, you have maybe 40% chance to succeed, maybe. And then if you're a good trader, you're making more than 50%, but then you have two-to-one, so you're making a little bit more money. So for his way of trading, taking a two-to-one risk reward strategy is right with less than 400 shares. If you trade my way, which I believe is the, the, the straightforward best average way to do money in the market, I don't think I trade in a way that you shouldn't. I think what I'm teaching, the way I'm trading, is probably the easiest way and the best way for you to learn. But you don't have to agree with me. You can develop your own strategy and it doesn't need to be one-to-one -one risk reward, then you may not trade 400 shares. You may not take 300 share partial. You may have a different way of trading and that is fine. Go ahead. Do that. That is fine. So that was just, you know, to talk about uh, the 300, whether you must or not or whatever. Okay. Now I'm just trying to figure out if I missed something important here and I don't think I missed anything important. So that is the time where I would love to answer your questions. So if you want to answer a question, please use the Q mark. Okay, please use Q mark because you can make plenty of remarks here. But please use the Q mark if you want to ask a question and I would be glad to answer. I see Muhammad ask a question without the Q mark. That's okay. I, I, I'm going back and I'm watching some. How do you decide your stop loss on your morning trades? Do you have eyeball and based on dollar value and you set based on type analysis technical? It's always based on the behavior of the stock that I'm trading, Mohammed. It's always based on watching the stock that I'm trading and I'm trying to figure out where would be the stop loss based on the chart. And then I'm checking the chart to see dollar wise, how much is that? So if my if my quantity would be, let's go back, 400 shares, and my stop loss would be, in that case, 50 cents or 60 cents, I would go down to 200 shares, definitely. So I would decide it depending on what I see. Plus, sometimes I would change that. Is that possible that with a 
30 cent stop loss and target that's just like I mentioned more 25 my my average I would in fact trade double that size 800 shares well based on what I just told you in the past hour or so no right you should trade 400 shares because you should have your stop loss and your partials and how much money you're willing to lose here and there but not all trades are created equally. You need to understand that. That is a little bit advanced, actually very advanced. So if I'll take my regular size, even though I have double stop loss, and that trade looks perfect for me, but perfect for me, and I think that the market's working in my direction, and it's not just a 3% gap, it's like a 13% gap, and the trade looks perfect, perfect for me for several reasons market direction the trade the technical formation even I may double my size so not all trades are created equally but if you are the first year please don't do that please don't do that don't double your size when you think because when you think it looks perfect I'm not sure you know that it looks perfect you will think and you will know that it looks perfect after probably a few years so yeah I can do that but the average trade would be 400 shares or 200 shares if the stop loss is more than that. Okay, plenty other questions. I'll go back and read them. Uh, should newbies avoid trading during the first one hour of volatility? No, absolutely not, Tim. You should take more trades in the first one hour because volatility is good for you. The only question is your quantity, not the volatility. Now it takes me back also 17 years when I started trading. I preferred trading I prefer trading New York Stock Exchange stocks because they are they were at least less volatile than Nasdaq stocks. And I I was looking for that. I was looking for less volatile stocks. I was looking for not to trade in the first uh, 30 minutes or one hour or so. That was a big mistake. No. The answer is no. And I can give you an answer that is Again, I can explain that for the next two hours, but please try to trust me on this. No, please trade volatile stocks. Just mind your quantity. Volatility is good. Direction is good. Uh, trend is good. And volatility is very, very important. Look at days without volatility. I'm losing money on days without volatility. Yesterday, somehow I managed to be up $400. That was almost losing money. I started my day by losing money yesterday. So volatility is very, very important for me. And that was due to lack of volatility yesterday. Do I need to put a physical stop loss on the entry after taking a part? Well, uh, Theodore, uh, good point. You know, hard stop or mental stop, as we call them. I would rather, if you're just starting out as a trader, let's say first six months or so, that you use a hard stop. I would rather you use a hard stop. Then when you build a little bit more discipline and you're a little bit con less concerned about the volatility of stocks, less concerned about the volatility of stocks, you will learn to use mental stops. But until then, please use hard stops. Yeah, it's good for you. It will release you. It will make you happier. It will make you trust more. It will help you mentally. And it's all about mental trading at the beginning. So when you're starting out as a trader, please, mental trading is very, very important. Use a hard stop, not later. And then again, we could talk about it for two hours about using hard stop or mental stops, but not now. How can I teach myself to hold on to winner longer? Well, Joseph, I think that I just mentioned today a good system, one of the systems. One of the system is take a partial, put some money in your pocket. Once you put this 30, 40, 50 dollars in your pocket, and usually more than that, usually more than that, 20 cent partial, 30 cent partial, we talked about 25 cent average, sometimes I get more than that. Maybe you got 30 cents with 300 shares. So 30 cents, 300 shares, we're talking about $90 in your pocket. You can't lose money anymore. You can't lose money anymore. You can't leave the 100 shares to ride. Teach yourself to do so. Teach yourself to do so. I want you. <laughs> Joseph, I'm going to follow you. In the next one week, I have, a, I, I have a task for you. Okay, homework. In the next one week, please, I want to get a personal private message from you saying you just had your $1 winner. Do you agree for that? Do I, ha do I have your agreement? Do we, do, can we shake hands on that, Joseph? In the next one week, whatever happens, 
you have at least, I don't care the quantity, even 50 shares. I want you to have a $1 winner. Can we agree on that? Let's shake hands. So 400 shares, not more than two trades. No, you can trade. No, it, it, were, it, it depends on how much money you have in your account, how much money you're willing to lose. I'm not saying you shouldn't trade more than two trades a day. I'm saying that if you traded till today, four trades a day with 100 shares or 200 shares, then yes, not more than two trades. Let's say maximum three trades with 400 shares. And the third, maybe if you're doing good on the first two. <laughs> Thank you, Joseph. We, we've got a deal. You rarely make money in breakouts and you would rather short double stop for scalp. Do you think this is a bad idea? No, it's not a bad idea, either, Andrew. I, I would really like you to develop your own system. I would really like you to develop your own system. Developing your own system is very important in trading. You can't make money in trading unless you develop your own system. And if you, w whatever ticks you, whatever makes you happy, whatever makes you, whatever you do that makes you successful, that's what you should do. Really, if, if you started trading, let's say you watched my strategy and you found out something that you really like, stick to it, develop it. Just really stick to it, develop it. And, and do that, just do that and, and develop your own system, your own strategy. Really do that. Use 400 shares so that you can quickly figure out a stop loss. Well, Wow, you go back long, long time. When I started trading at, at my beginning months, really, actually weeks, I didn't use uh, exact quantity. I was using money quantity. Like I, I took it. That was a huge mistake. Nobody taught me. So I was like, okay, I'll trade $5,000. Sometimes it was 230 shares. Sometimes it was 712, something like that. So one of the reasons that you need to use 400 shares, or actually not 400, a certain number of shares is yes, you know exactly money-wise how much you're losing. I could go on and explain why also you always need to use exact number of shares and not money quantities, um, but or quantities based on money, actually number of shares, but that would be another lesson. So yes, please use 400 shares and then you know that 30 cents are always $120, winner or loser, always important. You did great with 400 shares, but when you increased my 400 to show, did you actually increase from 400 straight to 1,000? Amir, let me tell you this. I tried to increase from 400 to 600 three times, and I failed. And again, I'm going back many years, but I tried to move from 400 shares to 600 shares three times, and after probably two years I succeeded. So every time I was moving to 600 shares, I was losing money. That's very normal. <laughs> it is really, believe me. I came back to 400, started gaining again, moved up to 600, lost money some more. Moved up to 600, lost money some more, came back to 400. The, third, the fourth time I moved up, I stayed at 600 and moved up again. Now, every time I moved up to higher quantity, not only the four to six, the four to six was the hardest. The four to six was the hardest. I still remember that. It was terrible. And at first I didn't really understand why, how come? I, I didn't even blame the fact that I was moving my quantities up, which is absolutely the reason. It's so clear to me now. I do know that. I teach people that it, that happens. So yeah. Moving from 400 to 600, it's, for me, it was terrible, very hard. Took me years, two years, in fact. Then moving up was a little bit easier, but still had some issues with that. How do you find, how do I find stocks to trade? Can you walk, can I walk through what I do in the morning? I actually made a lesson. Uh, Keith, please go back to my YouTube channel and look, I just made a lesson like a few weeks ago, very, very, 
just recently, about how I look for my stocks, what I do. How did you miss that lesson? If you stop quickly, if you stop up quickly, is it wrong to think you just had a bad entry? Not the wrong stop size. Work on entries, keep your stop time. Okay. Well, you need to know upfront where your stop is going to be. You need to develop your trade. You need to, to you need to decide upon where your stop loss and where your target based on how on before you trade, not after, because you're biased. When you move into a trade, you're biased. You, what you think about the trade is not what I mean previous to taking the trade, you weren't biased. You 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 could calculate the right thing only before you click the button. Once you click the button, you're gone. You can think right. Now, of course, for me, it takes time. It I, I takes sorry, it takes less time to 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 decide where my stop was going to be, how much money I can lose, and so on. It really takes less time for me because I'm very experienced. It may take you more. If it does take you more and you miss the trade, fine. So you miss the trade. Sometimes you make more money not doing anything. Seriously, that's how it is in trading. What if we went went red as soon as we enter the trade? Should we release? No, 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 no. Size? No, 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 no. Wait for your stop loss. Be disciplined. Wait for your stop loss. If it takes a long time, Mosen, if it takes a long time, like you moved into a trade, doesn't do much, you're up five cents, you're down five cents, you're up two cents, you're down two cents. Yes, then release maybe three quarters, maybe half. But not if it's just, as you explained, move down. Can we over can we go over a trade I made in the morning? Oh not not now, sorry, don't have the time, Matthew, next time. It's half past ten in the evening here. I still have my adrenaline rush from the trading today. But I'm about like to drop real soon. Well, Javier, just take it safe. I mean, lower your size, lower your quantity of trades. Not much I can say, but uh, you need more, not necessarily more buying power, but you need more money to lose before you become a trader. Most people lose more than that. The said true, said true. I'm not going to say anything that is not really what I believe in. I know that it costs money to become trader. Yeah, your partial should be 300 shares on 400 shares. Absolutely. Well, stick to 400, David. Really, stick to 400 on an average trade. Don't go from 500 to 2,000, especially when you're starting out. So the way to fix that is relatively very simple for me to explain, David. Please go back to 400 shares. Go back to 400 shares and just stick to 400 shares. Now, if the stock is like very slow mover, 10 cent stop loss, we rarely take those, rarely, rarely take those, maybe move to 600 shares or 800 shares, rarely happens, it, it, it's, it's not rare that we have a 50 cent stop loss or a one dollar stop loss, then just move down, move down to 200 shares, move down to 100 shares, that would be okay, if you have a stop loss which is greater than 25 cents on average. Now if the stop loss is 30 cents, don't, don't change your quantities, okay guys, I'm don't be so dramatic about five cents or something like that. Just still use 400 shares. Your average share price should be 400 shares. 
when you're in a trade and you're making money do you move your stop loss instead of taking a partial yes absolutely I do you've seen me doing that in the trading room many 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 times I'm getting to my target and it goes over my target and then I'm following and following and following but then my stop loss becomes very very close so I'm no longer have a stop loss which is very far away my stop loss could be like three cents now watch me do that in the training room plenty of times whenever you hear me saying something like if it goes over that now I'm going to take it if it goes over now I'm going to take it something like that so that that's, that's what I'm trying to do that why you lose easier money trading 600 than 400 well that's a big issue Theodore that's a big big issue you think that you do the same thing when you raise your quantities to 600 shares you think you do the same thing obviously you don't really you absolutely don't you don't follow the same rules for example if you were used to take a partial at $100 profit with 600 shares it will feel right for you to take the partial at 100 so you don't need a 25 cent uh, move anymore to make $100 you only need um, 17 cents right something like that so if you only need 17 cents to make $100 you will find yourself taking partials at $100 because you feel right and maybe 20 cents now because you've got $120 and you'll take your partial at 20 cents when you you should have taken your partial at 25 cents because earlier you were taking it at 25 cents now you'll be taking it at 20 cents but when you have a, a loser you will take it all the way all the way and some more because you lose too much money for 600 shares and you were only used to losing maybe $100 now you're losing 120 and then you'll be taking a $140 loser because you weren't used to losing used to losing 120 I just gave you the bold things here you see you'll take your profits centwise less and your stop losses more sure you won't think you're doing that you won't even realize why it happened to you you're just going to see your account size comes down you're just going to notice that you're losing money instead of making money with 400 shares but believe me you will be losing money when you move up to 600 share I guarantee that how am I by saying so I guarantee you'll be losing money when you move up to 600 funny because you were making money with 400 doesn't make sense I know you know what when that happened to me it took me a long long time to understand the reason for me to lose money with 600 shares was due to the quantity I didn't even understand why does that am I just having bad luck here I was used to make money with 400 shares am I just having bad luck in the last two months losing money no it was 600 shares that was the reason And I know it doesn't make sense to you. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. I know. Didn't make sense to me at that time too. How do you set your daily profit amount goal based on your account size? Well, different story. I mean, I can't get into this. Sorry, right now. Please elaborate about uh, what situation you would add to let 400 shares. You would add to let's say for oh, uh, to buy that is that is very advanced I would gladly do that not today and I'm not sure here I would rather do that in advanced courses very advanced very advanced I should get into some real in-depth issues in order to explain that uh, trailing stop is not something uh, possible to use not at all I, I'm totally against using training stop totally against please don't use it please 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 don't use it it's not based on anything it's not based on technical analysis it's not based on anything just don't use it in the Colmex account when do I have to pay commission and fees every time you click the button 
That's how brokers make money. Colmex is relatively cheap on commission. It's like depends on depends, but it's six, seven, eight dollars per one thousand shares, something like that, depending on what quantities you're trading. How do you know? How do we know we are ready to move our position from 400 to 500? Uh, when you're very stable with 400, David, when you are very stable with 400 and you feel very comfortable with 400, move up to five or to 600 shares. And and just just be aware of the fact that you may be losing money. That's what's important. Now, this lesson won't help you not to lose money. I promised you earlier, you will lose money when you move up. <laughs> Didn't I? <coughs> so I can't help you with that. So how did I help you today? I helped you today. I helped you today realizing that once you get to that point, you will know why you're losing money. That's important. You will know why you're losing money. It's very important. It is recorded. It is recorded. No, wait, you can, you can come back to that. <laughs> when you write the check. Right. Guys, I'm done for the day, really. I'm, I'm, I'm just uh, starting to get a little bit uh, tired here. Um, and uh, looks like uh, after market S&P continues to move down, we had a big downside day, guys. Uh, right now it's down 1.7%. Like, oh my God. Are we seeing something interesting here? Are we seeing something interesting here? So hope you enjoyed. Hope it was good for you. Thank you very much for being here. And um, see you all in the trading room tomorrow. I enjoyed. Enjoyed being here with you today. Enjoyed making some money today in the trading. And um, enjoyed uh, teaching you today. See you tomorrow, traders. <laughs>